Oftentimes I was completely lost. I don't know what to do next. One thing I tell myself to do is to first go to Jesus. Uh, there will be many detours. Your life will not be easy, but you'll be learning through those times and hopefully you'll become a stronger, wiser, and a more faithful person. Good morning, JCS. Uh, it's good to be here. We only have one more week of school left, so you guys have been doing a very good job. And um, some of you guys have exams today, so uh, good luck on the exam so you can wrap it up well. And uh, we'll be on our way to summer vacation that is coming up, so uh, good job. Uh, I'm here today to talk about finding the way. Uh, I don't, m many of you guys probably know, but uh, I'm not very good with directions, so I'm getting lost all the time. How many of you guys get lost all the time? Let me see your hands. Okay, that's actually not as many as I thought. But um, five minutes outside of my house, I would get lost and I wouldn't know where to go. And uh, if I'm in a new city, I get lost entirely. And I have to depend on either using my navigation on my phone or if my battery is low, I'm really in trouble because I have to ask, pe ask around at people to get to where I'm going. And usually I'm very shy about asking strangers about, for directions. So um, I'm really in trouble when, when I don't have that. Uh, but as Christians, uh, I think one way that we can find our way is by seeking the counsel of Jesus. And um, we should try to communicate with, with Jesus for the message that he's trying to give us. And we can listen to him in multiple ways. Uh, sometimes he hits your heart when you're singing praises. Sometimes he speaks to you when you're praying. Uh, when you're reading the Bible, sometimes he will whisper things into your ears, and sometimes the Holy Spirit will move your heart in a specific direction. Uh, but in order to do that, it really requires uh, specific action from you. You need to be actively searching for the voice of God when you're trying to find the way. Uh, let's share a Bible verse. Commit to the Lord whatever you do, and he will establish your plans. From Proverbs 16.3. So um, I've made a lot of turns in my life, and oftentimes I was completely lost. I don't know what to do next, but um, when I hit those situations, one thing I tell myself to do is to first go to Jesus. So I would say, um, I don't know what it is that you want me to do next, Jesus, but um, you know what I can do. You know my skill set. You made me. You gave me these talents. So Put me at the right place where I can do my job well. And um, all the way up until now, uh, he has done just that. And I feel very blessed that he has used me greatly for his plan. And um, he always knows the best time and place for me to be so that I can uh, improve uh, that specific place. So I'm really glad. And um, a lot of you guys are graduating. Fifth graders, you're finishing up elementary school. Eighth graders, you're finishing up middle school and going on to high school. And um, all of you, you are finishing your current grade level next week. And then after summer vacation, you'll be moving up one more grade level. And I wish that um, five years from now, 10 years from now, you guys will have the same confession that Jesus really helped you find your way and that you feel like you were really used by Jesus. So I hope that, um, that this is a conviction in your heart, and I hope that even if you get lost, don't panic, because if you put your faith in Jesus, he will guide your steps, and he will let you arrive at your destination one way or another. Sometimes uh, he'll take you on a detour. I've taken a lot of detours, but eventually at the end, you will realize that it was all working together for the good of those who love him. Amen. Uh, today, uh, I, since this is my last chapel, uh, I've prepared some questions you've been meaning to ask Mr. Cloud, but never had the chance throughout the semester because uh, many of you were so busy studying and I'm so busy teaching, you guys don't really get to see me. So um, I surveyed some students and the groups of students I surveyed are my homeroom students and my IT club students and the First Avengers, which are the students who have been here since year 2015 and have been at the school for a long time. So if I didn't ask you anything, don't feel left out. Uh, it's because I only chose a specific group of students to ask. 
So um, here are some. I was actually really impressed at the quality of these questions. Um, thank you for asking me. So Joseph, not uh, Mr. Joseph, but Wondo Joseph, uh, his question really uh, <laughs> surprised me. When did you start wearing glasses? So, so random, but so important, right? So uh, I thought this was really interesting. Uh, my eyesight was really good all throughout elementary school. But um, in middle school, I really got into playing a game called SimCity. This is where you sit down and build your own city. And I would spend hours and hours just building my city. And I would get so focused, I would stare at the computer monitor really closely the whole time on days on, on end. And uh, a couple of months later, my eyesight got really bad and I ended up getting glasses, which I had to wear for the rest of my life. Oh, there's a surprise shot of Joseph in year 2014, November, along with Jaden there. So, uh, yeah. Grace wants to know, why is your name Mr. Cloud? Okay, so some of you guys know and some of you don't, but in, in 1997, there was a very popular video game in the US. It was called uh, Final Fantasy VII. And uh, this was my favorite game. And the main character's name is actually Cloud, Cloud Strife. So um, having been very inspired by this game, uh, I decided to um, change my name to Cloud. Prior to being Cloud, my name was just Jin. But this was such a common name among uh, Korean American community in the US. Like I knew, I knew six different Jins. I knew some girls that were Jins. So I, I was sad because, oh, my name is not unique. This, I wanted to have a unique name. And uh, once I became Cloud, nobody else is named Cloud. So I'm very proud of that name. And uh, you know, I've kept it since for over 20 years now. Caleb wants to know, do you ever regret being named after a game character? So normally I don't for the reason stated, but, but there was a time when um, in 2014 Incheon Asian Games, I was one of the press managers and translator there. And uh, there, we were in a big conference room with like 50 other people, and they're calling each person by name. And when they called Cloud, uh, all these people started like, like sort of giggling, and they're like, did he just say Cloud? <laughs> so uh, yeah, that, that was a little bit uh, embarrassing, but um, yeah, after that first day, we got really close. So everyone really appreciated my presence, so that was great. Other than that, I don't really regret being named a game character. More so than anything, I, I feel you know I feel good to have a unique name. David wants to know what were some difficulties about living in the USA and Korea. Well, this is a good question. Um, in the USA, I think some of the difficulties were um, if you are ill and you need to go to the hospital. Uh, number one, it costs a lot of money even if you have like medical, medical insurance. And number two, very often you need to make an appointment and wait for a few days before you can get anything done. So that was really, um, uh, that was an inconvenience in the US. In Korea, I think um, some of the difficulties that I face personally is, is driving because I have a long commute. And when people just cut me off uh, without a signal and when they do that every five minutes, I, I get really frustrated, so yeah. But with every country, there are advantages and disadvantages. So I don't think you know one country has a specific advantage over the other. Josh wants to know, did you always want to become a teacher? Hmm. Actually, I've never wanted to become a teacher when I was young. Actually, when I was young, I thought it would be dumb to become a teacher. I was like, why would you? There are all these bad kids. You're underpaid, underappreciated, underrespected. You know, why would you become a teacher is, is what I was thinking. But um, after I finished college, I took a little summer job. And that summer job was at a place called Imagination Camp. Uh, this was a very expensive, like elite computer camp. So all these kids that were coming, they were, you know, from very upper middle class, very um, kind of spoiled. And because, you know, they all come from very rich families. But uh, I, once I become a teacher there, I came in with the expectation of, okay, this is just my summer job. You know, I'm going to pick up my money and leave. But uh, the students really got um, attached to me. Uh, a lot of these kids, they were there because their parents were too busy to hang out with them. So they would just pay the money and sort of send them at this camp so they could just 
you know, be there, sort of like babysitters. And they didn't really have a good relationship with their parents. So, um, and this is a computer camp. So this is like a heaven for nerds. So like we would talk about video games and computer technology and stuff, which is, you know, I'm all about that. So um, they, they really appreciated me. Um, I was voted the best teacher of the camp. I was the only Asian person there. <laughs> they were 95% white and like 5% like African American and um, Spanish. But yeah, I was the only Asian person there. But um, they, they really appreciated me. Uh, each week we would select the homeroom teacher. And then when they were selected in my homeroom, they would be like, yes, we get to go into Cloud's room. Like that. Um, so after completing this camp, I was like, hey, maybe, you know, maybe I'm okay at this teaching thing. I don't know. I guess I could give it a try. And then, you know, 15 years since then, I'm still a teacher. So, uh, yeah, it was a good experience for me. Um, why did you decide to come to this school? Thank you, Peter, for asking. Uh, the one reason I came to this school was based on the invitation from our principal, from, from Dr. Lee. So um, we, I've worked with him before at, in previous institutions, and um, he uh, really valued my worth, and he valued what I, well, what I was able to do. So... Um, I appreciated the opportunity to sort of come and sort of build the foundations for this school. And um, I'm glad that uh, we've come so far to where we are now. And we've seen a lot of changes, a lot of positive changes, a lot of people being changed through this experience. And this was overall a very rewarding uh, experience to me. Thank you for asking, Peter. Uh, Emma wants to know, when do you feel proud as a fifth grade teacher? Uh, I've been teaching fifth grade for a long time. Uh, even before JCS, I was I was teaching fifth grade. That's like my that's my favorite grade level to teach, like fourth, fifth, and sixth. Uh, the primary reason is because um, like first and second graders, they they have too much energy for me. Like I have a hard time keeping up with them. And when they're older, like they don't they don't appreciate my aje kegu anymore. They they think they're too cool for me, so they don't laugh at my jokes anymore. But fourth and fifth graders, I could say anything and they laugh at anything. So hey, thank you guys. Uh, when I feel proud is when I see growth in you. So like if, uh, when you begin the semester and you're like, you know, you don't appreciate other, other people, you're very self-centered, uh, you know, you don't prepare for stuff. But at the end of the semester, you open the door for other people and ask people, do you need help? You know, things like that. That, that really makes me proud when I see you showing love and kindness. That's, I really like that. So, um, yeah. I feel proud when that happens. Timothy wants to know, uh, what is the hard part about being a teacher? Well, that's a really uh, insightful question, Timothy. Um, uh, what's hard part about being a teacher is actually what you don't see in the classroom. Because before I bring a lecture into the classroom, there's a lot of preparation time uh, where I have to write the lesson plans for it. I look up a lot of resources so that you guys can... Uh, It'll be more interactive, and you guys can see like what's going on on the screen. I tried to bring in like video clips and some interactive material, and that kind of research time, uh, you know, takes time to to prepare, and um, uh, trying to juggle that along with the other tasks you have to do can be a hard part. But at the same time, I feel like it's very rewarding at the end of the day. Christine wants to know, when did you struggle the most as a teacher at JCS? So I don't know if you guys remember, but a couple years back, it might have been 2018 or 2019, but there was a time when I had an eye infection, like when I had pink eye, and I couldn't come to school for the entire week because the doctor said I was, you know, this condition was very contagious. So um, I had to teach online from home all classes because I didn't want to just, you know, call out sick the whole week because then other teachers have to cover my classes for the entire week. And I didn't want to put that kind of burden or pressure on the other teachers. And uh, I, I was teaching online, but my eyes were red, like X-Men Cyclops red. And like it was itchy and scratchy and it was, I, I had tears just coming down and it was really miserable, miserable experience. And it was really hard, but um, I'm glad we were able to connect online. So we were at least able to get the teaching across there. Jaden wants to know, did you ever actually hit someone with the memo stick? Oh, I have so many funny stories because, um, well, you guys know, I don't, I, I don't actually hit people with my memo stick. I just have it as like a threatening method. But sometimes when I'm teaching, I go so like, I get so passionate and I wave my hands around and, um, you know, sometimes I'm like, 
yes, and then I spread my hands and, you know, somebody else happens to be there with my meme stick and they get, you know, just clocked in the face or something like that. Uh, that's happened a few times. Um, uh, I think Peter was, uh, yeah, Peter almost lost consciousness uh, due to that meme stick. There was a time Christine was attacked, uh, assaulted once with the meme stick by accident, you know. I, I apologized profusely both times. Uh, yeah, but uh, it was, it's fun. It's it's memorable experience for me. Well, fun for me, probably not fun for you, but yeah. So that was cool. Julie wants to, the, wants to know, what are some embarrassing moments that you remember? So uh, some of you guys know, because you guys ask me my embarrassing moments all the time. And the one notable one I remember is not from JCS. This is when I was in elementary school. Uh, I used to swim for a long time, so I dived in the water in a very confident manner. And then when I hit the water, my swimming trunks just came off and I just dived in butt naked into the bottom of the pool. And when I emerged on top of the surface, I saw people giggling and girls were like pointing in my direction because my swimming trunks were just floating in the water and I was just totally naked. Uh, this was a very traumatic experience and a very embarrassing moment for me. I was wishing the earth would open up and swallow me whole. But now, you know, 30 years later, it gives a great story to tell my students. So I'm, I appreciate the fact that I had that. For the students, um, we're always embarrassing ourselves when we have our sex education class. So the boys are so interested in sex education class. And they have so many questions. And uh, they have these sparkling and shiny eyes because they want to learn more. I've never seen this kind of passion in like regular English class, but during sex education, oh my goodness. And you know, they ask the questions they've been meaning to ask, but didn't have anyone want to, didn't have anyone to ask because you know, you can't really ask sex related questions to your dad, right? So it's really awkward. So they bring it up to me and I appreciate that uh, experience. Um, we talk about a lot of different things and uh, you know, we embarrass ourselves, but it's always a fun time. Uh, Lois wants to know, what are some funny moments that you remember? So what's funny for me, probably not funny for you, but what's funny for me is like, I'm the same size the last six, seven years, but you guys grow so much and this is really funny for me. So sometimes I look back at the old photos, like, um, like that's Caleb when he was in fifth grade in my class. Uh, I wish I had audio, but if I don't, that's okay because like he's really passionately trying to do his uh, nonfiction review and his voice was really high pitched at that time. But now he's bigger than me and he has this deep manly sunai voice and it's really funny for me to look at the old pictures uh, of things like that. That's Emily when she was in fourth grade in my class and look at that unit test on the left side. She busts out a ruler and everything is measured precisely with perfectly symmetrical dimensions on her uh, on her matching section. I was like, wow, she's, she's in fourth grade. And later on, like throughout the semester, she would come in and she's like, Mr. Cloud, I overprepared for my project. I was like, I, I know, I, I know, Emily, I know. Yeah, but such a wonderful student all throughout the years. Very proud of you, Emily. And uh, there's Emily again, listening to Miss Joyce's story. Miss Joyce looks like a high schooler there. And there's Lois with Mr. Park learning uh, golf together. Very small at that time. Did you know that Lois and Peter both ran for class captain when they were in fifth grade? See, you guys might not believe that, but they did really well in class. So they ran for class captain. Look at those, look at those, uh, look at those outlaws over there. Sean, Leo, and DK. You know, I told them, hey, if you're not going to study hard, just go join the military. And they really decided to join the military. Look, look, look at that. Just being rebellious. There's Daniel Nam uh, giving his uh, peer teaching presentation. And there's Christine. So cute and little. This was before she was rebellious. You know, when I say anything, she would say, okay, Mr. Cloud. Now she's like, why? Why? Rebellious now. Yeah. There's Ida in the back. She's terrified when we went to the Lotte World together. There's Gia and Leo. Leo has the best photo shots. Like, I, I would take photo shots of all the students. Leo always has the best reactions. And of course, like, you can't forget like Julie and DK there. And uh, there's Esther and Emily from a long time ago. My favorite one is DK there. Uh, just so cute before he got really rebellious. Yeah. 
I hear the screams from the other classes in the I'm on the second floor right now. DK, who wrote the most Bansongmun? You did, DK. Yes, you had a book of Bansongmun. So you wrote the most. I'm going to try to quicken my pace here because uh, I have to wrap it up soon. So uh, Ida says, something. what's something you remember about us, the current eighth graders? Your class was really big. You had like 14 students in that class. So wherever we go, especially on field trips, you guys were very noisy. And uh, that's what I remember. And when we went to Jirisan trip together, we had such a fun time. Here's the pajama party at Jirisan. Of course, we're presenting all these like studying material there. You can see Peter there in his PJs. And uh, you guys did a good job there. Emily wants to know, when do you feel like all your hard work has paid off? Uh, I feel my hard work has paid off when I see measurable results. So, um, for example, like uh, like your typing speed, if it really increases. Uh, Emma went from like 7 words per minute to like 63 words per minute. And um, sometimes when I see your iReady score in the beginning of the semester, if you're at like performing at second grade level, but at the end you're performing at like a fourth grade level, when I see measurable changes, I feel really proud and I feel my hard work has paid off. And now stepping back, I see, you know, like JCS as a school has, has grown a lot. Uh, we have very good staff and very good students, and I also feel my hard work has paid off. Uh, Sean wants to know, how has your life changed by becoming a parent? Uh, Mr. Tommy actually asked me this question, too. I feel like um, you get to learn more about God when you become a parent because um, your kid will make a lot of mistakes and you get very angry. But at the end of the day, you always end up loving them. And that's probably how God feels about me or, or about all of you. So, um, yeah. And the most important question, Yesen wants to know, what do you want to eat right now? I want to have some tacos right now. Yay. So uh, those were the questions. Thank you for asking, everybody. Uh, last advice I have for you is leave room for God to send you on detours because the blessings may come on the paths that you didn't expect to take. So uh, there will be many detours. Your life will not be easy, but you'll be learning through those times, and hopefully you'll become a stronger, wiser, and a more faithful person. Thank you, everybody. Uh, let me end up in prayer. Amen. All right. Thank you. All right. Thank, thank you for your message. Ah, All right. No problem. So... Uh, um, I'm here to um, announce the, the good news and bad news. Uh, good news is the, um, Mr. Cloud, he has done great achievement and the contributions last about eight years. And also the uh, you know, previous school, uh, he and I, we uh, you know, worked together as a colleague about two years, so about you know, one uh, you know, decade, which is uh, 10 years. Uh, in terms of our lives, a 10 years of mark is like working, living, uh, it's just you know, serving the, for the one community together. It's such a remarkable uh, you know, experience. So um, this is great uh, news. Uh, he had a great uh, you know, achievement and uh, contribution for the kingdom of God and also our community. The bad news is the, uh, he's going to have... Um, like you know, family transition, uh, which means uh, relocating uh, his you know living the place from here to South Korea to uh, America. You're planning to go back to Florida, right? That's right. Uh, Florida pretty pretty hot. That's what I heard. <laughs> I've never been there in my okay. whole life. So. Uh, Disney World. I mean, I mean, it's pretty big. It's like yeah. um, I really appreciate uh, what uh, Mr. Cloud has done for once again our community last eight years. In, in terms of school the size, it's not the big school, but uh, you know, small community as a kind of family oriented and also purpose driven, you know, community like Christ Center Education, uh, you know, the teachers and faculty members, even students um, staying here, working here more than five or six years is not that easy because uh, you know a lot of mixed feeling, mixed experiences we went through, we go through, even we are going through. So uh, Mr. Cloud, really appreciate uh, your patience and co you know cooperation. Hey, thank you. And support. Um, the, we are about the time to um, kind of give him some kind of appreciation. I mean, I know it's a graduation ceremony. Uh, we're gonna give him some kind of plaque, uh, appreciation plaque, uh, you know, on the stage, and then uh, we're gonna uh, pray for him. Uh, we're together. I prepared a special gift. Oh wow! Yeah, this is the uh, the book. I actually published about 10 years ago. Wow. Yeah, so um, it's translation, translating book, and uh, translation into the uh, Korea, mm. I mean Korean from English. So original, the, the title is uh, Leadership Next. 
Eddie Gibbs is one of my, actually, the uh, mentors and then, uh, my uh, the leaders at the Fuller Theological Seminary. Okay. He's such a great, great uh, pastor and a scholar and missionary, too. Hmm. So um, I wrote here uh, so my appreciation words. Wow, uh, thank so you. I really appreciate that. I hope that, that. Uh, it helps you to be a shaped and the next letter. I know it's kind of mm. boring book. <laughs> <laughs> this is the, such a the kind of theological <laughs> seminary book. Okay. So uh, still, but steady seller. Uh, oh, it was right. it was a good. Um, I mean, the, it was an award actually by the uh, the Christian the publication the company. Wow. Actually, I mean, the, uh, was association so huh. the, the ten years ago. So okay. really appreciate uh, this one. Wow! Thank it's you, very, uh, thank you so much. It has yeah. uh, "imi no" right, right yeah. there on the, on the book. <laughs> Inside <laughs> flap is yeah. "imi no." So, wow! Okay. Thank you. All right. Um, I know there's a lot of kids and even teachers and even parents that feel kind of sad and uh, regretful to say goodbye. But we believe this is not E and D, but A and D continuing. Mm. You're going to be uh, relocated, but also serving the Lord in, you know, different location and mm -hmm. a different job. So uh, we continue, you know, work together, you know, for our Jesus Christ. Sure. And then uh, we continue to pray for each other, too. Mm -hmm. So let me pray for you and then okay. finish up. Yeah. All right. Let's pray together. Jesus, we thank you for the last more than eight, year, eight years. Such a great uh, journey we went through. And then we have done many, many uh, things, great, me meaningful, memorable things you know, for your education ministry, raising students, your leaders, fostering and leading, educating students, parents, and faculties for your glory. Lord, uh, we believe this uh, privilege you given a special privilege given to us, especially Mr. Cloud. There's a, you know, unpredictable, like any uh, goals and plans when we started this school, looks like desert, nothing. But you given us the vision that raise, make your future in the name of Christ. Lord, uh, we thank you so much for his um, willingness and passion, commitment, and also responsibility with his uh, professionalism to change this society and even this community to worship and to follow your will, Lord. Through uh, Mr. Klaus, his uh, great contributions, a lot of people, a lot of students and teachers and parents come to your cross, and that we come to your, your message, your grace. Lord, we have seen a lot of students said that uh, my academic ability has been improved. Lord, also a lot of parents said that uh, they were touched by the Mr. Cloud, their, his commitment and dedication for his students. It touched their lives, changed their lives, their perspectives to become your children, Lord. We believe this is such a great ministry. It's been about eight years, more than eight, eight years. But as he's going to move out and go in different location, but we believe that uh, your spirit, your Holy Spirit, all the times be with him, his family, and his uh, direction, his job, and his uh, colleagues as well. Continue to bless upon his journey and upon the, uh, also his family health, finance, and kids' education, and uh, their spiritual commitment, Lord, and faith. Well, thank you so much for also all uh, the teachers' uh, the, you know, cooperation and the support, and uh, even the, our teamwork you know, as a one body in the name of Christ. Once again, uh, Lord, uh, even though we are going to say uh, goodbye, but we continually get together, keep in touch, and pray for you and Cloud and everyone until we see Jesus Christ in the heaven, Lord. Thank you. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.